Should you stay or should you go? And what if he never gets it? And what did Lori have to decide she was more important than? This video covers all of that, so keep watching to find out. Lori, to the idea of staying and repairing a relationship versus exiting a relationship deemed unhealthy. In the context of my work, I suspect if I'd known you guys a long time ago, when this stuff was more of an, an immediate sort of acute problem in your lives, that I would have been completely understanding of one or both of you choosing to right, end your marriage based on like what was going on at the time, based on the idea that trust had been betrayed multiple times, boundaries had been violated multiple times. That to me is not an illogical reason to end a relationship. Lori, you could have deemed it to be non-trustworthy or Jay, you could have deemed it to be this like hostile thing, even though I wouldn't have agreed with you. You could have deemed it to be hostile because Lori wasn't allowing you to do something that theoretically you could have thought was totally fine. That, you know, this is Lori trying to exert her will or control over me. I, I don't think that's reasonable, but I'm sure plenty of men in your world feel that way. Um, where do you draw the line between? Because I'm again, I'm not an advisor on staying or going. I, I, it's, it's, that's not it's not my place. But I feel like maybe you guys might have those conversations. And I'm so interested in what you say. I mean, when do we decide? OK, the, this is beyond redemption. This is beyond saving. I've sacrificed enough. I need to choose me. Not in the gross way, but in the in the healthy way and the not choose to subject myself to harm anymore way what? versus, you know, I'm going to. I'm going to fight the good fight. I'm going to learn how to uh, feel safe on my own. I'm going to learn how to feel comfort on my own. I'm going to endure with the hope that it's going to get better, not I'm going to endure subjecting myself to harm always. Right, right. Again, we have a long-term relationship with the couples that come to us. Um, I let her know, you know, it's going to take some time. We'll, we'll try to help him get to where he says he wants to go will help you start using your voice, will help you start drawing boundaries. In there somewhere, like once she starts using her voice and, and drawing boundaries, we start seeing how he responds. Some of the time it really brings out a darker, darker side of him. All right, and it can, it can take her a while to get to that point. So at this point we're talking, you know, maybe anywhere from six months to a year of working weekly together. After a while of, of meeting two to two, where Jay and I are both meeting with a couple, after a while, he might start digging his heels in. And he might start going like, I thought this was a short-term thing. Mm -hmm. At that point, I start telling her, we've given him enough time. He's starting to show his true colors. He's starting to show, you know, is he going to choose himself over you and the family over and over again? And that, that uh, resistance starts coming out in uglier and uglier ways in him. And at that point, I asked her, okay, what do you want to do? You know, do you want to continue going down that road again? Or do, are you ready to shift? Mm -hmm. You know, because then the shift has to happen kind of on her end where she draws maybe harder boundaries or, or maybe there's an out of house separation or he sleeps on the couch or whatever, it takes enough of a shift to cause him enough pain to maybe shift on his end, you know? So that's, it's not a clear line, but it, uh, at some point I'm like, he's had enough time. Most guys at this point would have, you know, yeah. shifted. So. And I, I don't think Lori's advocating for divorce or even telling the woman, well, you need to leave him now. It's more like, do you, there's a resource question there, I think, for a lot of people. So we, we always tell the people we're working with, you need a big network. You need a network of people that you can lean on because um, this process will will take a ton of energy, you know, um, to 
to change your marriage, to change how you approach life, whether for either person, because, um, you know, when we talked about validation, if someone hadn't validated Lori to say, no, what he is doing is wrong. What he is doing needs to change. It's not healthy for your relationship. I don't just so you know, nobody's ever said that to me, but they early on, somebody said it's Trump traumatic. I'm yeah. Like, what? <laughs> well, if someone hadn't said you're right, she would have, it's possible. She could have gone to 10 people and they all would have said, yeah, leave him alone. That's what guys do. And so how much energy do you put into something where everybody you talk to says it's never going to change? You know, but if you have people standing there with you going, no, this needs to change. I believe in you. I've got your back. You know, all that. The guy may eventually get it. He may finally decide that he's like, oh, that's what I was doing wrong this whole time. Or um, we've had clients after uh, an out of house separation, the guy finally figures out, oh, this is what I was looking for. And he chooses to end, to end the marriage. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been rare, but um, the, the setting the boundaries and some of those things really gives, like you said, it gives more data points. How well does the guy adjust to the boundary? Does he hold the boundary? <clears throat> and does the boundary have a, an impact? Does it bring change? <clears throat> And if it's not bringing change, then there's, there's clearly something wrong. And that may be that Lori and I say, look, we need to refer you on because we just don't have the mm -hmm. skill set to change what's going on for him. Or, you know, you can decide to, to exit the relationship, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, a, in a number of ways. It can simply be, I'm going to pull my heart back far enough that he can't do anything more to hurt me, mm -hmm. you know, even if I stay. And that's, again, it's not optimal, but it's not, um, it's not us advocating for divorce. It's advocating for what is um, the woman's desire, what, what she as the betrayed spouse can, um, can live with. I'd like to think of myself as someone who advocates healthy self-love, yeah. self-respect. Well, I do not want families to break. I do not want marriages to end. If, if, if the choice is toxic marriage that harms that person and, and perhaps, you know, their children by proxy, I, I, I calculate the superior alternative to be, you know, in the healthiest, most peaceful way possible, removing yourself from that environment. Yeah. Uh, and I, yeah, I, I, I pray that doesn't come off like divorce advocacy. It just means I'm not okay with people subjecting themselves to abusive treatment, even if so the abusive treatment is, is incidental or accidental or not intended by, by their marriage partner. Right. So I was one of those I, that had difficulty with self-love and I, it was a, it was a big revelation for me the day I realized I, I am more important than my marriage is. You know, I am just as important or more important than my marriage is. Um, that was a, that was a huge, because I was, I thought relationships trumped everything, but not yeah. when it was literally killing cells. Yeah. Yeah, I did too. And I don't, right, that, I think that that could maybe even shock some people, um, but I, I don't want it to. I, I, to me, the ideal marriage is two people who love and respect themselves and very healthy you know, appropriate ways and that they get married because they recognize that the value of, of partnership and serving something greater than themselves, but not at the expense of the other person taking from them more than, than they're being given. Um, and it's, you know, it's tricky. And this, I think so much of what we do lives in this funny gray area semantic space and it requires, I don't know, patience and thought and nuance. And I'd love to sit around and talk to you guys about it forever, but I've got to, got to run. Thanks for joining us, everybody. On the next video, we'll discuss two different kinds of values and two different types of addictions. So we'll see you there. Bye. Bye.